Hello. Hello. Good morning, yes, sir. sir. Good. good morning. Good can you hear me? Yes, yes good morning. Can you hear you, sir? Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. I just want to be sure you guys can hear me. Um, can let, hear let me know when you want me to start. Anytime you want me to start, you let me know. Now I am online. Okay, it's um, 6 a.m. here, but I'm fine. And I'm here. All right. All right, sir. Thank you very much. We'll definitely do that. Okay. I think uh, we'll be starting the program this morning. We'll be starting the program this morning. And then if you are just joining us from our YouTube channel, you are very much welcome. If you're just joining us from our YouTube channel, you are very much welcome. You are very much welcome. All right. Today we'll be beginning our anatomy triad series, our May webinar. And we have been looking up to for many months now on how to see need to harness the good inside of our brain boss and brain masters all over the world. So we'll be starting. So wherever you are, please, if you are still thinking of what to do and you are trying to invite a friend, just let them in. Begin to send notification to your friends that we have started. We have started. So I'll be listening at what we have here for you in our list of programs. We'll be doing something that is very snappy to make sure that our students are able to get in touch with us and at the same time return back to their school and other programs. So we'll have a welcome note. And then after that, we'll tell you who we are and what we do in Anatomy Triad. And then we'll see need to introduce our panelists. And then we'll go into the panel section proper. And then the panel section proper just has just three parts which we'll be dealing seriously to help you gain knowledge and insight of what we are doing here. And then there will be room for general questions and answers from our speakers. And then thereafter, we have announcements and how to still follow us up in case you are lost, or you are unable to get in touch with us for today. And then there will be closure. So this is happening live. You can reach out to this same program anytime, any day, as far as you have access to YouTube. So once again, welcome notes. You are welcome to the amazing family of Anatomy Triad. Anatomy Triad is a, an organization that is an NGO. We are not paying or asking students to pay for Anatomy Triad programs. Everything is free. And this whole issue of anatomy triad came on board while we were still in the university. Most of the admins we have in anatomy triad saw so need for them to pass a better network system to our students who are crying. That they don't know what they are studying, they are lost, they can't find themselves. That is why this anatomy triad was better. And it has been fully fleshed since on the 28th of January, 2023. So who do you think Anatomy Triad will benefit? Anatomy Triad is both for undergraduate students and also for graduates of anatomy discipline. The Anatomy Triad aim, we have an aim. We didn't just jump into having Anatomy Triad because we want to do Anatomy Triad. Uh, and then our aim is to make sure that in anatomy, we have our academias, we have our professionals, and then we have students. So the triad is like a triangle. See so need to unite these three bodies to give an insight, career insight, and also to develop their student and graduate to have professional zenith in the area of anatomy. That is the aim of anatomy triad. And our motto is leveraging on the insight of anatomists. So all our anatomists, both graduate people working in different areas, we leverage on their insight, their experience, to be able to get to know our stand as anatomists. We have several programs which we will not be able to mention here because of time factors. 
that is how we are going to be running anatomy triad on the basis of webinar scholarship programs research programs competitions and so many stuff being packaged in this program we have created so many channels you can get in touch with us on youtube you can get in touch on facebook telegram and even whatsapp just to make sure that we give you the best in anatomy triad so that is that for who we are and what we do in anatomy triad so today we'll be dealing a very serious and very important program which is gaining career insight in anatomy gaining career insight as an anatomist and we have approximately four panelists that will be involved in our wonderful program for today. We have Dr. Edith Young Akan. Dr. Edith Young is a graduate from University of Calabar. He studied anatomy, BSc, University of Calabar. Went further for master's still anatomy, University of Lagos. Still further for PhD, University of Lagos, anatomy, all anatomy. And today he will be speaking to us all the way from United States of America, Yale University. He is a research scientist there in the discipline of uh, infectious disease, University of Yale Medicine Department. That is where he will be speaking from today. He has really done a lot. The anatomy that you have been crying, you are not making impact. He has made a lot of impact globally that even United States aid has even supported his research work on HIV and many other programs and agencies that he has partnered with to make sure that he channel his knowledge of anatomy to solve world problem. So Mr. Sorry, Dr. Kang or Dr. Didion has been very, very grateful to society and also has been immensely contributing greatly to the world at large through his knowledge of anatomy. Then also we'll be having an embryologist joining us very soon that will also be a part of our panelists by name is Wisdom Oroche. She is an embryologist. She obtained BSc in anatomy from uh, our Odume Gojuku University. And also she also obtained EMT program from Colorado University. EMT is emergency medical technician. And then she's currently a practicing embryologist working with the British Fertility Clinic, which most of you have been yearning to be a part and parcel of as either a trainee in embryology. She will be joining us very soon to share her own experience and knowledge as it concerns anatomy. And then also we, okay, she's already here. She's already here, welcome. <laughs> she's already here, welcome. So we also have uh, our amazing uncle. Uh, I'm glad him uncle because he has been an admin and also has a lot of insight to put in anatomy. And he's another person, but uh, Master Obed, Aposhi, or Aposhi Obed, he is a graduate of anatomy from University of Calabar. And then, in fact, the young man has been so zealous in solving humanity problems such that he initiated a, a program called Emancipation a Program, an Emancipation Initiative, where he was able to win an award as a, uh, they gave him a title in Northern Land while he was serving during his NYSC as a person that brought technology to Gombe State. <laughs> so you could imagine an anatomist sharing knowledge up to the extent of bringing something that is very powerful to his state. So he won the state government award of uh, contributing immensely to society during his NYSC. And apart from that, he's also a program manager of uh, HR Die Skill program. And currently he's doing his master's in neuropsychology at the National Forensic University of India. So he is also part of our speakers for today. And then we also have another uncle. I call him uncle because he's also an admin and he has been working immensely in anatomy trial to see that 
we have the best for our student. And there's no other person but uh, Master Olumide. Olumide is also a graduate of uh, the Department of Anatomy, University of Calabar. Currently running masters in forensic anthropology. And to your greater surprise, he is the CEO of Mides Medical. In fact, his medical establishment is really aiding people in North Central and moving towards South South and other regions of Nigeria. And verily, we are looking forward to having that medical establishment moving so globally. And that is an anatomist doing so well in his institution and establishment. So these are the like minds of uh, persons we have currently that will be speaking to us on questions we'll be channeling to them and your own complaint and insights as it concerns today's webinar. As for me and my household, I am Igu Matthew Fidelis. I'm a graduate of human anatomy from University of Calabar, Calabar. currently an MSc candidate of University of Abuja. And also I'm currently a lecturer at a Strategic College of Health in Nasarawa State. So once again, welcome to Anatomy Triad. Welcome to Anatomy Triad. And remember once again, our theme for this program is gaining career insight as an anatomist. Please. For our guests, you can just let us see you wherever you are. And then maybe, hello, are you posted with me? Okay. okay. Our guests are here. Uncle, Uncle Bed. Okay, I thought you were off. All right. So, yes, that is uh, Dr. Edidion waving. Embryologist wisdom, can you please just indicate? Let our students and graduates see you. We can't hear you, Ma. You'll add All right. Help. Okay. 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 Hello, Ma. Yeah. Ma, can you not hear me? Yes, okay. I can all right, so that is uh, our embryologist. She's doing very well. In fact, I will soon join her team. <laughs> and then uh, this is uh, Uncle Lumide, CEO of Mide's Medical. Can you just please say hi to your people out there? Hi, good morning, everybody. Okay, and this is our honorable doctor, all the way from Yale University. In fact, he amazed me this morning. He woke up beyond normal time just to be a part of this program. Welcome, sir. Just say hi to your people. It's fine. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. All right. <laughs> That's very great. So all the beautiful faces you are seeing are all anatomists. And they are not afraid. We are here to conquer the world. We we'll tell them who we are, and we are here to defeat whatsoever is defeatable. All right. So I believe since we are set, Please, for our panelists, we have just questions. And uh, you can see, we'll give some, uh, will I say, room to ladies first. <laughs> we'll give room to ladies first so that she can be able to get back to her work. She was telling me yesterday that she has some egg that she wants to harvest and maybe give us to eat this morning. <laughs> So we need to give her that room so that she'll go back to her lab, harvest the egg, and then we'll have a new wonderful baby joining anatomy very soon. All right. So we are entering our panel section proper. Please, if you are still thinking that you won't join us, better join us now because we are starting very seriously. All right. Our first question for our panelists. Please, so this one is not an exam. It's just for you today. <laughs> okay. So this is the question. What is your career story in anatomy like? Or what has your career story in anatomy like? So we will give room first to Miss Wisdom. So Ma, what has your career story in anatomy like? What has it been? Let's hear you. Okay. 
Okay, good morning, everybody. I don't know. Can everyone hear me? Yes, ma. Can everyone yes, hear me? Can. Yes, ma. We can yes, hear you. Yes, we can. First of all, I'll say thank you so much. For Oh, okay. So, first of all, I'll say thank you so for organizing this platform like this. You guys, everyone, because um, for me, um, I can to study medicine because I couldn't get the admission. Okay, it's breaking a bit. It's breaking a bit. It was always the issue. So at the time, someone mm -hmm. suggested. Why not? Ma, I don't know what's wrong with your network. You are in Lagos, capital city. <laughs> nothing to the world. And I was so. Wow. Okay, Matthew, why not let her know her network is um, breaking? Let's see whether she can fix it and then come back. All right. I well, think someone, I'll just... someone else can attend to that question. Okay. Let me just send a message. Okay, it's like she's off. Okay. So why she will join us later? Dr. Edidion, you can share your own experience on what your career in anatomy has been like. And when she joins, she will take over from her own path. Okay, um, Matthew, um, I want to say a big thank you to you for organizing this program, Anatomy Triad. I want to also say a big thank you to the leadership of Anatomy Triad. Uh, you guys are doing a very, very great job. And I'm so proud of you. I mean, you reached out to me on LinkedIn. We've never met ourselves before. But you did the hard work of trying to reach out to um, an anatomist. And I, I must say I'm very proud of you guys. Um, today, for all the anatomists on board listening, I want to say, um, never think you, you chose anatomy, you know, even if you chose anatomy by mistake, never think you did a mistake. I never think so. Um, I had this feeling when I started my course in anatomy because I wanted to do medicine. I think that's the case for almost everyone. Um, uh, but, you know, medicine didn't come. Then I wanted to do medical lab science. Medical lab science didn't come. All right. So, uh, some way, somehow, my name just came out in anatomy. It didn't come out in the medical, it didn't come in medicine, it didn't come in medical lab, so it just came out in anatomy. And I, I had stayed back at home for like two years waiting for admission into medicine. And this thing, so I'm like, oh, well, you've got an admission now. Why are you waiting at home? Why not just go and do this anatomy? So I started anatomy year one, and it was like, what am I doing? I kept taking jam. Then, then it was just jam. There was nothing like post UTME then. So I kept taking jam. All right, nothing. I couldn't go. In. And year two came. I was still struggling, trying to go back into medicine. And all my grades were very, very poor very poor year one and my year two grades were very because my mind was never in this anatomy uh, but i think some way somehow i got to find out that as an anatomist we had someone all right who um was doing uh, assisted reproduction and he was in need of embryologists and all that and all my life i've always been thinking of improving reproduction all right, so that uh, those who suffer from infertility would no longer suffer from infertility. And so I realized as an embryologist, I could do that. An anatomy, embryologist sat, you know, in anatomy, comfortably in anatomy. Okay, so maybe I can do this. All right, maybe I didn't, maybe anatomy was not a mistake after all. So I started looking into anatomy now for the first time. Then for the first time to my grades also started picking up and getting better. <laughs> uh, so much so that uh, I think in my year, final year, there was a woman called Dr. Mrs. Kechuku. Uh, she's no longer in uh, Calabar, she's no longer in Nigeria. I think she's now in the UK. Um, who called me, then she was the um, our, our course advisor. And then she looked at me and said, what were you doing in your year one? 
your year one and your final year results are world apart. Uh, what is the matter? What were you doing? I said, brother, Ma, you don't understand. You don't understand what that means to me. <laughs> All right. And um, so I finished uh, as a BSc graduate in anatomy, and I came out with a second class blower. And um, I felt bad. I felt that I'd done me that was very, very intelligent. I knew that I was very, very yet. Yeah, I came out with a second class lower. And I was, what is this? And not even a very high second class lower. But I felt, <laughs> I felt so terrible. And um, well, I decided to go for my NYC, uh, except in, Benu except in um, um, on those states. And I, it was while serving. And then I was just trusting the Lord. I was like, what do I do? had the option of going back. Most of my colleagues were going back to do medicine. And all the while, because I was always the chief dissector, they felt I'm going to become a surgeon. They felt I'm always going to go back to medicine and all that. And even me, I felt that way. But at this point, I just wanted to get to know the sense of direction. Where do I go to now? I have this option of going to go and do medicine. I have this option of going to go and do a master's in anatomy. Both of them, my parents at then, were willing to sponsor me. And they just told me, make a choice of what you want. At least they gave me that privilege to make a choice. And so I thought about it and prayed about it. And um, um, NYC actually helped me. NYC directed me to the classroom to go and teach. And while teaching my students one day biology, I realized I liked what I was doing. I liked it. I liked the teaching. And so immediately I said, I'm going to pick up a master's form. I went to Calabar to go and pick up a master's from Mark Calabar told me, you cannot do a master's. Do you know why? My own alma mater told me I can't do a master's in Calabar. They said my, my BSc results, the grade was too poor. All right, that is not enough to do a master's. I felt so bad. I was like, I want to do master's now. I want to become a lecturer. And they are telling me I cannot do a master's. My own alma mater is telling me I can't do a master's. Huh? Am I that bad? I felt very bad. I felt, I felt, I felt, you, 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 I, how would I, would I say I felt embarrassed? I felt, um, in fact, I almost ran into depression. Then I met a lady. Um, um, she was in um, the um, ESCO there in Anatomy. What was her name again? Kohasa. I think it has changed down, right? Um, it was um, Kohasa then. Uh, uh, she was the vice president while I was the PR, and um, she told me that she was doing her masters in Lagos, and Lagos was in one year of masters, and uh, that's University of Lagos. She said, "Why are you trying to go to Calabar to go and do a masters that they spend three to four years doing a masters, or right, sometimes even five years doing a masters? Why not try Lagos?" So I landed Lagos. Long story cut short, I. I took the qualifying exams. I passed. I got into Lagos. I started doing, I did the master's and I came out with a very good grade <laughs> in the master's. Now because I was focused. And after I had finished the master's, they just placed me on a scholarship. They said, come and do a PhD, do a PhD. So they sponsored my PhD. Come and do a PhD, do a PhD with us. You got a very good grade. All right. And so immediately they 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 recruited me into the staff list, but not as a full-time staff because they were sponsoring my PhD. So from the masters, I converted and did a PhD. Now, note, one of the things I liked about University of Lagos, that University of Lagos was the first school, the first department in the whole of West Africa to successfully do an IVF in vitro fertilization, assisted reproduction. And it was in an anatomy department that they did it. Okay? And so I was so pleased about that. That's um, by Professor Ashu. And so I wanted to do that. So everything... But when I went again into Lagos, Lagos was not really, at this point, Ashu had left, Professor Ashu had left Lagos, and they were not really doing the assisted reproduction proper. What they were just doing was the types and shadows of assisted reproduction. All right, not really what I wanted. But again, I did it with all my heart and pursued and pursued a PhD. And now I found myself doing things in male reproduction. All right, and it was crazy because all this while, I didn't have a job doing the master's. Right? Everything was um, sponsored uh, by myself. And um, even when I wanted to do a PhD, they say you can't do a PhD if you don't have a job. But I went ahead and I put, faith, I put the faith I had 
all right, that had seen me all, uh, all along. I put it to work and I started doing the PhD, all right, against the advice of even the HOD then. And um, along, when I, while I continued, I got this job in Bainway State University, all right, that, um, that um, employed me and uh, as a full-time staff. Now, that gave me more money. Remember, I was on a scholarship, but again, inflation came in and the scholarship money was not even enough because scholarship was a fixed amount of money. Right, it wasn't even enough anymore for the PhD. But now a job came in Benue State University to um, lecture as an assistant um, lecturer in anatomy, and I continued my career from there. Long story cut short, I got a PhD in 2015 January, and um, and since then, after that, I went to do a postdoctoral fellowship in South Africa, in the Department of um, Clinical Anatomy, also the Division of Morphology and Andrology. Uh, and um, finished the postdoctoral fellowship and went back to to um, to Lagos as a staff, as a faculty, as a lecturer. Now I got, I now got a job in university, full time job now. All right, and I grew in career. Now I started. Uh, that's that's a bit. I think I need to stop there for questions. Okay, uh, how I maybe <laughs> I think I, it's it's so long. My story is a long one. Let me pause there a bit and. Um, Maybe there are further questions I can answer. But that's how I got into Lagos to do my... Um, um, okay, you may not know, Matthew, that I'm also a senior lecturer in the University of Lagos. What you know is that I am at Yale, and I'm a research scientist at Yale, but I'm also a senior lecturer at the University of Lagos. All right, that's still an active position right now. Okay, so I hold two portfolios right now. Okay, thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. I think when I mean, I say the uh, I am seeing another uh, grillo at the sign of anatomy. <laughs> the man that abandoned medicine to start doing anatomy. The man that abandoned medicine to start doing anatomy. That is very, very inspiring. I think I feel like jumping from where I am sitting. Thank you very much, sir. You're Your experience is a very strong urge to motivate people to still stand in the gap of anatomy. We are blessed, sir. Huh? All Thank right. You. Sorry for the mistake of forgetting that you are senior lecturer there at the University of Lagos. Please, all messy people, look up to him. <laughs> All right. Now we will have uh, our embryologist. I hope my police now Lagos has given you a better <laughs> network. <laughs> I hope so too. All right. So let's listen to you, ma. So but can you hear me clearly now? Yes, ma. Oh, okay. All right. So um I'm not sure where the breaking starts from, but I think I have to start afresh again. So um, like I said, my dream course has always been Martin. And um I was thinking of going for to study medicine in school, but after four years of writing, 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 and then nothing. So someone was like, suggested to me to, why not try anatomy? I was like, ah, I don't know what the course is all about. And I barely even had time to even, because you know, when that is not your passion, that is not what you want to do. You don't even care to know what exactly is all about. So I, I had to blindly, feel change my because i already wrote jam and my cut of mark didn't as in my score wasn't up to the cut of mark so i was not looking for something else so i had to do a change of course and i put anatomy and just like that i got anatomy and i think i heard the doctor saying that his first year and second year in school the result wasn't nice it's always the case i got into school even to study was work because I always I was just looking for opportunity to switch to medicine, which a lot of us did. But um, the school I was studying is a state university, and the school fees alone for medicine was too high. So my my dad warned me beforehand that if you switch, you're on your own. Mm. So I had to continue with anatomy, but my mind was in there. So my first year result was. Okay, of course, first year we've not started anatomy courses. We are doing general courses, it was still good. But second year, when we got into anatomy, it was as though they were talking jargons. So the results dropped like drastically. That second year, I was like, ah, 
And funny enough, when they were now doing the orientation for us in 200 level, because that's when they will now try to tell you, welcome to anatomy, you are now a full anatomist and the rest. So one of the lecturer now walked up to the stage. These are freshers in the hall, and he made a statement. I don't forget that statement. I don't think I can ever forget it. He said, you are studying anatomy. You are just wasting your time. Oh, no. Me, I studied anatomy, and where am I? I had to move on. I had to go for medicine. He said, you are wasting your time. God, I picked that, and I was like, really? So I'm wasting my time like this. <laughs> but after that um, thing he made, so as though it's awakening something in me. So, because by the time I go home, I was thinking of it, you're wasting your time, you're wasting... I said, so what exactly is this anatomy that people are studying and they are actually wasting their time? That got me thinking and I started researching a lot of things. And I was wondering, okay, let me even know. I entered anatomy, I don't even know what it's all about. Okay, let me even know what it's all about. That was when I started making my research. I think that should be in 300 level now. So, I got to discover that anatomy has a lot of opportunities. But that thing, he's not the only one that said it. A lot of lecturers said it. So that thing stuck into us that you are wasting your time. So I felt, okay, I could be different even with the anatomy. But my mind was still in finish anatomy and enter medicine. That was where my mind was. So I kept pushing and finished anatomy. I was feeling, what will I even do with this certificate? Let me just drop it. That was when I decided to go for... Um, emergency medical medicine and i got a financial aid in university of colorado even though it was an online and practical some practicals were all, um, um offline like physical practicals so but while i was doing the course i noticed one thing the basis of everything they were doing is anatomy like the way i was grabbing everything as though i've had that course before even people that did nursing, people that are doctors that are into the course with me, they were like, ah, they don't understand this. So wisdom, can you help me with this? I was like, I was not the hot cake in the class. Like, <laughs> even though it's online, I had a lot of networking. That was when I really realized. That was when I really realized that um, anatomy is the basis of everything. Like, we, we have advantage a lot. Someone walked up to me and was asking me, anatomy or physiology, which should I go for? They told me to go for physiology, but anatomy, and the anatomy doesn't have any value. I was like, it depends on you. Anatomy is the basis of everything you really want to do when it comes to medicine. And as an anatomist, I've really, like, even though I didn't realize this while in school, and that's why I'm really grateful when you reached out to me that there's a platform like this. I was very, very happy because I think it should serve as um, a sensitization to our colleagues who are in school. Because a lot of them have gotten that um, negative feedbacks of anatomy is nothing, you can't do anything with anatomy, and they are really working with it. They don't really, they just want to do the course to get their BSc. But as I am now, even if I, even if I want to go for my master's, Except for the fact that clinical embryology, I can also go for it. I can decide to go for um, my master's in anatomy. Someone was asking me why. Like, is, is there any really, um, is it really relevant for me to go? Why not go into something more better? I said, because if you understand what anatomy is really all about, you know. So this is um, my story, um, my career story, honestly. Because in school, I was just studying it to pass my exam, not really to know what anatomy was because of what they have given to us. And I don't forget that the anatomy is a waste of time. We are really wasting our time. But to be honest, it's really not a waste of time. I have achieved a lot of things. I well, I did excellently well in my emergency medicine. And uh, I'm currently in into embryology. So there are a lot of Anatomy is very diversified. Uh, any area you want to go into, you can and you will do excellent well. So, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Well, hmm. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much, man. In fact, as for me and my household, I am overblessed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not 18 now, but my stomach is filled up with anatomy insight. <laughs> thank I you very do. much, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we move on to our uncle, Uncle Mide's medical CEO. So since he's CEO, I've been hearing a lot of 
noise in his background, calling him for attention. <laughs> so, Mide's medical, please, you will unmute yourself and then give us your own experience or career story. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My Augustus. Good morning. My Oga at the level of uh, the research scientist. My greetings, sir. Greetings to you. My greetings, ma. My Oga in India. My greetings. And my comrade. My greetings to you, too. Thank you, And sir. other anatomies coming for the undergraduate. My greetings, too. Um, I'll quickly go down and beat down everything because I have a lot of things to do. I just have to squeeze myself. I messaged my ogre in India, Sir Obed, that I have one emergency to attend to right now. But I just have to make myself available for this program. So I remain Aro Chapel Limite. I agree. Hello. Uh, Uncle Lumi, then we can't hear down. you. Okay, yes, we can hear you now. Yes. I remain my own self, Aru Chapel Lumi Day, CEO of Mide Medicals in Abuja and the uh, MSc in Forensic Science online study. Um I think his network is a bit poor. I can hear him now. Are we together? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. All right. Sorry, it's the network. I don't know what's wrong with the network. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> so, okay. um, let me share my career in anatomy. Let me share some one or two insights. When I got my admission into anatomy, it was more of like, wow, I don't even know what I'm studying. Like, I don't even know what I'm studying compared to when um, Dr. Asuko, then in University of Calabar, was like, come, why are you in anatomy? Go to medicine. You are just wasting your time. Like, that wasting time is, in fact, it was a big war to me. And I have to summon courage that, okay, if people are not making it an anatomy, I'll be the first person to change the scenario. So I had to put more effort. So Obed can bear me witness. In the class, we are the bombers in the class. Gross anatomy, we are always in front. Ah, no, I must do this. I must make people to be proud of anatomy. You get it. So we started moving forth and so and so and so, like putting the strength and still moving in courage to study anatomy. When we got to our fourth year, our final year, like hmm, it was more of like, okay, let me just do something that can gain more skills in anatomy. So, and hmm, um, I did the effect of castor oil in the human and animal comparison. <clears throat> and it was just positive. Castor oil seed, and uh, this seed is very poisonous to both human and the animals. So, and uh, after I did that, I noticed that if although it's <laughs> this, I'm not supposed to share this, but I will do. It is because of this research that I had to know that one or two castor oil seed can actually cause one to not conceive. It's just like a family planning. Once you swallow one or two seed, it will make you to conceive for a year. I don't know. Anybody can try that 
wherever place you are, you can try that. So this is actually working. Dr. Odofa can bear me witness because he's my project supervisor. So with that, I hope anatomy has gained a chance that, okay, castor oil seed can actually cause one not to conceive for a year. So then let me move down to my service here. I served in Ebony. I, by God's grace, with the zeal that, okay, I love saving life. I was the student liaison officer in my local government. And um, I work in the cantonment MRS. So are we together? Okay, we can hear you. Yes, we yes, can sir. hear you. So I work in the MRS. And um, I noticed that the, um, the captains, they have a field where they keep their livestock. They have a poultry farm. And these animals are already getting healed. Like, they were very sick. So, and they were looking for veterinary doctor, though. And I was not like, okay... This is where anthropology should come in, comparison between animal and human. At least I did that in school, comparative anatomy. Wow. I just have to summon the courage and move down to the farm. I took care of all the cows. I took care of the sheep, the goats. Like, wow. <laughs> this, this animal were breeding so great than even when the veterinary doctors are coming to take care of them. When the veterinary doctor came a week after when I did my treatment on those animals, and he was like, who took care of the animal? They said it's me. And the man was shocked. Like, how did you get to know all this? I said, with the help of my pharmacology, with the help of comparative anatomy, I had to do all this. And it was like, wow, this is beautiful. You know, in the in human, we have the gluteus maximus, the gluteus major, where you use your intergluteus. When it's divided into quadrants, you use the left upper quadrant. I had to follow all those techniques. Like, <laughs> it was just so beautiful. The man had to congratulate me, like, thank you for doing this. You are honestly, anatomy is going places with you. And I was just like, wow, this is just a big encouragement <laughs> that you put more effort in the field. So after the whole stuff, and we just have to get off in a boy and we left after the NYC. I came back home and my dad was like, what is next? I said, I'll go for master's. Okay, but you have to work first. I said, I'm not working under any sector. I just need capital to start my own. I know what I want to do. And he said, okay, where do I want to be? I said, Abuja. And he like, just go and prosper. He just have to pray for me that day, prayed, and I left. So I got down to Abuja, and um, I had to, because my pharmacology was so sharp, honestly. <laughs> because I was trained in the General Hospital Mina and I had to use my pharmacology to, to tackle the whole distance to create my own sector. I have a pharmacy that at least I save human life greatly in Airports Road. Especially, in fact, in the whole Abuja and in Ibadan, in um, Calabar, in Lagos, in Kaduna, I am going places with anatomy saving people's life just as i've said even i had one emergency that they had to rush the person down to my store and i had to like wow this this person actually slumped and you are not supposed to rush this person because of brain lesion so and before we could get to the hospital actually there was already a little drain of the csf into the brain and misconception of blood and the csf and which is already affecting the Chakot artery. 
So before we could know, they just had to operate it and drain the blood and the CSF to reduce intracranial pressure. So um, at least with anatomy, I know that, in fact, I'm gaining a lot in anatomy and I'm reading every day. You have to read. Look at my master's forensic anthropology. The heavy material I download online, <laughs> honestly, even normally, even me, I'm not sure I can download all those things to my head, but because of the love I have for the whole beauty of anatomy, I just have to put my effort and right. win of the career. So that is how uh, I made myself a strong. Okay, let me give you a little challenge I had when I came down to Abuja, they were like, how would anatomists gain a pharmacy and so? Then the uh, MD in pharmacy council had to place an exam for me. <laughs> so um, I could remember the first three questions she asked. She said, what does tubocorarine do in the system? And I was like, okay, tubocorarine is administered when one is having pain. Maybe before surgery or after surgery. It's a local anesthesia. And she was like, which school did you go to? I said, University of Calabar. <laughs> she was just like, wow, even the people that went to study the pharmacy don't even know how to attend questions like this. I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know, but it's grace, ma. So... She was like, she wouldn't let one of our sons to study anatomy because of what I did now. That's a nice one. Honestly. <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> no, she was, I was not like, ah, no. <laughs> she was just like, no, honestly. She called the lawyer in charge of um, Pharmacy Council of Nigeria in Abuja. She called the lawyer and, uh, and was like, this is an anatomist. Lost you. We can't hear you again. Capital City again. It's very not <laughs> more even greatly than the farmer. Ah, okay. okay. By the grace of God, you come back and tell us more, not none. Okay. So we'll be looking forward to our India master. <laughs> All right. So Uncle Obed. Please, you now have to give us your own experience so far. Hello, good um, morning. Can you hear me? Sir. Yes, I can hear you. I believe morning, we can go. hear you. Okay. Is it morning in um, India? Sincerely, I, it's actually afternoon, almost evening. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> <laughs> <That's much>. <laughs> <laughs> I am truly inspired to be here amongst I what I would term as egos in anatomy. Sincerely, your stories have been truly inspiring. From um, our embryology mama to our papa in the US, and then to my brother here, and then our own CEO in the making. Um, my journey through anatomy hasn't been so much different from what we've explained. The truth is, um, anatomy is mostly an accidental cause for everybody. Like, either I want to do medicine or I just didn't almost have anywhere else to go. But we, that was because of the conception we were raised with it, as regards anatomy. But we can, we can see and we have seen that um, anatomy is more like a, a jack of all trade in the place of medicine. It's a bedrock for almost every course that you'll want to study. Um, I, I went into anatomy in 2014, and actually I applied for medicine the first year and didn't get through. And then the next year I just went into anatomy. Although, yes, the person said I wanted to do medicine, but with the frustration I met in anatomy, I didn't want to go back to school, so the to medicine was out of the picture. So where I actually got the insight to um, register in this 
um, field that I am currently, which is neuropsychology, was because I during the pandemic, coronavirus specifically, I got an insight on um, humanitarian duties and I started some little humanitarian duties. That was the conception of um, my organization, the Massipito Initiative, an NGO that is um, youth focused. So after then, I went to for NYC and I carried out um, a community development project which was targeted at persons with disabilities. I was able to train more than a hundred of them in computer literacy because I had learned sign language through my university days. So with this um, few experience, I, I, I re focused my attention towards and humanitarian duties. I was like, okay, let me, I think I thrive more in humanitarian and specifically disabilities. Then I came across this opportunity that uh, in neuropsychology, I was actually vying for IVF, which was embryology. What triggered me of, for I, IVF was, um, I had the chance to communicate with the university who, which was offering IVF and not just IVF, they were also including pre-genetics um, in, in vitro fertilization, which on a normal, if you even do embryology in master's level, you'll have to, you'll have to pay for a certificate course to get that part of embryology. Uh, I don't know if I'm right, our embryologist mama is here. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to pay, you'd have to go for an extra course to get that um, certification. So I was thrilled by that. The opportunity was there, but to some extent, it just fizzled up. And being redirected towards mental and digital effect, that was where I was more productive. So um, I ventured into um, neuropsychology. I was presented with this opportunity um, in, got a scholarship, and currently I'm in my second semester in um, neuropsychology. And it has been inspiring because Basically, all my classmates are from the arts. They did psychology. I'm basically the only person who did neuropsychology. And the courses, you will see that they were basically neuroanatomy, although I know I fled from neuroanatomy during, during my undergraduate. But at least I got some concepts, some basic concepts that is really helping me thrive, especially in the place of neuropsychology. It, has, it is mind-blowing what I'm seeing here. And I would really want to pose to every anatomy student that the truth is there is gold mine in anatomy if we can only look deeper. From the surface, yes, we are called the mortuary attendants or whatever this. So I can, you can see that from the screen here, the various persons you have in embryology, in research, and all, we have limitless opportunity. Even at the point I felt we in anatomy has a better opportunity than persons in um, medicine. Because the time I got to, I got to the resolve that medical students are quite restricted. Yes, you have a number of places you can go to, but we can actually multitask. We see um, Olumide right currently, who does anthropology, who does um, ph ph pharmacy, and we can veer into any of these fields just with one certificate. So it is actually a, a, a place to be. And I am happy if, if with this knowledge, if they give birth to me again and they say, okay, go back to BSc, I think I will want to do anatomy. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Hmm. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I think uh, a lot of persons are beginning to ask questions from the YouTube channel. Please, there will be room for questioning. There will be room I for think that. we should do that so, soon. <laughs> so <laughs> that there will be, room for that. be Okay. I, I will know it's my name. Okay. I think uh, there is a question here for our senior embryologist. Lara, did you get started with embryology? <laughs> Hello, Ms. Wisdom, true. are you still here with us? How did you get started with embryology? They just saw you were in the room. Uh, did you fly to a British clinic? 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> so can we hear from you? How did you get started with embryology? Bash, please, Lizzie, you know, she's about responding to your question. <laughs> okay. Um, I already saw that a lot of questions about that on the chat box, comment section. Okay. Everybody's asking, how did you get there? Okay. Um, actually, one thing is about getting ready for the opportunity. Okay. Um, okay. Of course, uh, when when I finished from school, I, I did my service. I was... Like I said, I was already thinking of going into emergency medicine um, before uh, I, I think one of my lecturers in school then will always say, you can work as an embryologist. And I'm wondering, how will I work as an embryologist when I just did, uh, embryology in anatomy is just maybe a course that we did, not like you did it full, full. So, but even at that, I had to start um, researching, first of all, to know where opportunities are for me as an anatomy in um, embryology, if I really want to go into embryology. So I did a full research about that. And I got to find out about hospitals that are doing IVF, that they can train you um, since you have basic knowledge. So they can train you on the practical aspects. So even with that, I had to, thank God LinkedIn has made everything easy for us. So I had to reach out to embryologists that I know already in the field. And they were telling me things to read, how to get acquainted with the lab, that there are some questions that are expected of you. Because um, a lot of people have said that they reject anatomy when they go for training. Like some hospitals don't really want to um, take you in to train you. But that's actually not true. The truth is just like... Um, What's his name? Um, our pharmacology person just said that he got to a place, he did anatomy, he's not a pharmacist, and they asked him a question, and he was able to answer it more than even people that did pharmacy. So it gave him an edge. So the trust was much more. So most things that happened, I had one of a friend who um, told me he was going for an interview in an um, in a, an IVF clinic. So I think it was some questions that were asked, thrown at him about the embryos and he really could do anxiety. So their question was like, and you want to, you want us to train you, so are we starting afresh? So when I was discussing with him, I told him, I said, you have to get an edge, get something outstanding, learn these things before you go. So that when they asked you some certain questions, I remember there were a lot of questions that were thrown at me. I was really frightened the day I was doing my interview because I had a long panel, like a long people seated waiting to bombard you with questions for you to even fail. And so um, because I was already, I was prepared, but I was still afraid, like, of course, that fear will still be there now. But when they were asking the questions, and I was giving them their reply. And so by the time they were done, they were like, do you have any question for us? Of course. Maybe I would have said no, but I had a question for them. I was like, so what is the future of IVF? Looking at it in the next five or 10 years. And they turned to each other. They were like, really, nobody has ever asked us this question. Like, So she's really planning ahead, not just for today, not just to come and learn. And so she's planning for five years, what will happen? And so I think that really gave an edge. So um, what I would say to everyone is this first of all start making your research if you really want to go into embryology you have to get all the basic um basic knowledge about the embryo because that's basically what they do yes even though when you come in you also use your anatomical terms to confuse most of the people like we always do here so people that didn't do anatomy we have edge over them because by the time they are trying to collect the eggs and then Somebody is asking you some questions. You know, you already know all the angles, all the positions, or how everything in the body is. Okay, so, but first of all, again, um, very in-depth knowledge about the embryos. How do they form? How do they come about? What stages do um can you harvest egg? You get a lot of knowledge about it because. That is what they look out for when you go for your interview. It is the only in-depth knowledge that was going to give you an edge. So 
saying that um, some IVF clinic don't take training is because they feel you are just an average anatomy student. Like I refused to be an average anatomy student, even when I came out. And when I got about, I heard, I learned about um, embryology. I was like, okay. So I had to start making my research, first of all. I had to start asking questions. What is expected of an embryology? What and what do I need to know? So I got all my information right. And then I reached out to them. I think this, this was the first clinic I reached out to. I didn't reach out to maybe start writing to several IVF clinics, no. This was the first clinic I reached out to, and then the day I did my interview, so like, they just, they were like, okay, we're sending you your, um, this thing, we're sending you your employment later. Um, at first, it was Abuja. I have to go to Abuja to go and start up with them there, in Abuja branch, before I was moved back to Lagos. And they have refused to let me go from Lagos back to Abuja. <laughs> so what I, what um, my conclusion is, if you really want to go into embryology, it is our field. Nobody can do it better than us. That is the truth. We have microbiologists here. We have, um, but it is our field because in microbiology, I don't think they did embryology in school. Yes, but we did our course as an embryologist even though not full embryology, but we did our development courses in school. So just get basic knowledge, learn about it, then hit. Don't just move to clinic and say, hey, I'm coming to be an embryologist trainee or I want to volunteer with you. Actually, I said that I wanted to volunteer with them, honestly. I think I wasn't really coming that um, they should pay me. I just wanted to volunteer with them for some time, get the skill I needed, and then move on. But seeing the edge, there was no way it, it didn't work that way. I was I was just employed and started training. <clears throat> so um, what I'm just saying that is it's all about you. Prepare for the opportunity and then hit the wherever you want to apply, and you will see how how it will happen as though it's magic. So you really need to be at the edge of it. You really need to get an in-depth knowledge of it before going to, even if it's not just embryology, every other field is the same. Every other field is, is the same. So as an anatomy, don't just be average with the way you were taught in school. Go the extra mile. As in pay attention to little things that doesn't even matter. They really matter a lot. So pay attention to every little Every little information in that your textbook online about anatomy, embryology, it really matters and it's going to give you that edge that you're looking for. So thank you. All right. Hmm. In fact, I think I, while I was going for one of my interviews, I also asked a lot of questions. <laughs> Interesting. Yes, I had an encounter with a doctor that has put a barricade in anatomy. In fact, we always fight it in the office. <laughs> we say, embryologist, anatomy can't be here. I say, is a lie? This is our cause. It's not even your cause. You need medicine, not embryology. <laughs> let, 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 let me shock you. Let me shock you. I, I just like what um, Mr. Storm has said. And um, I want to also add that, um, you see, um, in University of Lagos, where I, I lecture, uh, most of my postgraduate students who are finished from the field um, of anatomy um, specialized in reproductive um, biology, and they have been working with the sperm cells all right, and doing some exploration on the sperm cells, both animals and human sperm cells. We have an andrology lab. I have an andrology lab in the um, University of Lagos. And um, from there, we've had some persons who have moved directly into the um, fertility uh, clinics as embryologists. And some of them have gone in as an andrologist. In fact, here, I am also a specialist, an andrologist specialist um, for uh, one of the universities here in the US. And um, uh, this this is everything on the be I'm flying on the wings of anatomy. And so just like Miss Wisdom, I'm just trying to corroborate what she said that just Pay good attention. Know what you want. I veered into um, um, oh, Mr. Bed was talking about neuroscience. Neuro, uh, I veered into neuroscience. Neuroscience is very rich. It's wealthy. 
But I didn't have passion for neuroscience. This is still on the bedrock of anatomy. I veered in there. In fact, I even got a grant sponsored by the US government for neuroscience. I did it, retired the grant, but I didn't like it. I was like, I don't like neuroscience. I like my embryology. All right, I want to continue my embryology, my, my, my andrology. And so I did that. And we just published the paper last week, all right, having gotten centers from, uh, you might have seen that paper, uh, Matthew, you might have seen the paper, Scientific Reports, Nature Scientific Report, which is one of the big journals. We had how many hospitals? We had four hospitals from Nigeria. Bridge Clinic was one of them, all right? Um, we had um, um, Medical Art Center. We had um, Nisa Premier in, um, in Abuja. And then we also had um, 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 Fertility Assist, all right? So we had that, and then we had hospitals from South Africa. I, you know, I brought all these hospitals together and made this possible, that we have published a paper that shows that male infertility is on the, is on the increase. Yeah. That, you must have seen that paper. That yes, sir. I was not thinking of making a research on that. I'm, I'm just so glad that you're saying it now. So this has, in fact, this has visited a lot of a lot of persons have begun to read it. We are talking to WHO. Things have to be done about the males. Every man needs to know about their semen parameters early in time, early in life, so that they can know what they need to do, where they need to bank it. But again, I'm not stopping there. In October, um, I and some of my collaborators from Austria will be coming to University of Lagos. I just want to give back. I want to do some uh, going to do a workshop on epigenetic changes. All right epigenetic changes, how you can do an epigenetic analysis of your sperm cells of your to see whether there are changes that are um, that are um, toxic or would cause any mutation or as such that maybe in future either your generation or your next generation may not may suffer um, from anything like azospermia, oligospermia and all those things. I'm trying to do a workshop and that workshop is going to take, take place in October in the University of Lagos on epigenetic changes. So your anatomy can take you places. Anywhere you are, just know that thing that you're doing. Just know your, you cannot stand and they're asking you questions on your own anatomy and you're not firing back. This world is a competitive place. I'm at Yale today. It's a competition. It's a, it's a, it's a competition. You need to know what you know. Know it very well. That's what's, what's key anywhere. Thank you. Oh, wow. So in conclusion for that, it will stop lamentation. You have something. Eh? Start, start doing it and stop lamenting that, oh, nothing is here and that is that. All right, there's another question. I believe this one is for doctor. Uh, Hamzi is asking, one can research graduate of anatomy leverage on to get access to MSc opportunity for research and hopefully a career in academia. I think what I can, should get what that. What can a recent okay. graduate of anatomy, is that what is it? What a yes. recent graduate what, of anatomy yes. can leverage on? Yes, to get access to MSc opportunities for research and hopefully a career in academia. Yeah. Well, a recent graduate of anatomy, all you just need to do is, which part of research do you want to go into? Every school has their strengths. All right. Uh, if you see University of Calabar, they have their strength in anthropology. They have their strength in neuro. All right. Uh, you can see that in Calabar. In Lagos, their strength is actually in reproductive biology. All right. In, anything in biology, anything andrology, their strength, that's where their strength is. So every school, Amadou Bello, I think their strength is in um, neuro, neuroscience. Right. Every oh. school. So you need to know what you really want to do. What career path, what career trajectory do you want to take? All right. Then you begin to, you know, tilt towards that. Your research, you do your research about which school do you want to go to? What do they really do? Which kind of lecturers are there? All right. Before you make your applications. Because these things they're going to ask you in the interview. And going to show. Your passion is going to show. All right. Because they'll ask you those questions and the interviewers are not dummies. They know. By the time you're faking it, they'll know that, oh, this one... So it's important you get to know where you want to go to, then begin to make those applications. I think for a recent graduate, nobody's going to ask you too much. As far as you're a recent grad, BSc graduate, nobody's expecting a publication from you. 
All they just need to see is that you have a good grade. You can pass. University of Lagos is interesting because they, they have an examination for you. It doesn't matter your grade. Just come and pass that exams. If you can pass that exams well, then they'll take you in. Because they understand that a lot of persons had issues in their school, while school. If you can pass that exams, you go in. And that's the beauty of University of Lagos. Well, all right. Hamzi, I believe Dr. Mosav added more to your clarification. So you need to know the strength of your school. I think this one is powerful. This one is powerful. Strength of your school. I'm writing it down already. I need to know the strength of my school. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right. That's great. Sir. Thank you. I think uh, we'll move to the second question so that we'll be a little bit fast. And the second question is, what are your mistakes and lessons learned now? What are your mistakes in this career part of anatomy? What mistakes have you done and what lessons have you been able to learn from these mistakes? All right, let's start with, uh, maybe we'll be doing it back for this time around. Mr. Lumide, what mistake have you done while studying anatomy and what lessons have you been able to learn from it? Can you hear us, Mr. Lumide? Can. You say what? Sorry. Yes, the question is, what mistake have you done while you were in anatomy? And what have you learned from it now? What mistake? Yes. Please call okay, if you think question. yes, if you didn't get it on the on the course of you studying anatomy and up to this extent, what have you specifically been involved in? That is a very big mistake. And what have you learned from it? Okay. Um, let me say the mistake I made was not putting my full interest at first. I was deceived at my 100 level because I couldn't focus, honestly. And, um, and I think that made me had a low steam grade in my year one because I was just, I wasn't, I wasn't just interested. The whole thing was frustrating. And if I had known that this is how the future will be with anatomy, honestly, I would not be extremely serious with the career from school. And uh, I hope I am making adjustments now by doing my master's and putting my awful strength in the master's. So, wow. Um, so at least, let me say, I am correcting my errors I made in the early anatomy and in the middle anatomy now, I'm doing Explorer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so I will encourage the upcoming anatomists, please, henceforth, put your full strength. If you are confused anywhere, reach me. Reach me. I'm, I'm there to give you the maximum courage you need. Please. All right. That's great. That's great. Okay. Uh, our mama, please. We need to hear from you. <laughs> okay. Um, the mistake I made, and I think it's general with every other person that um, has studied anatomy so far, it's, of course, taking the words of people that we feel that we could trust um, because this is not this wasn't what I wanted to go for, and then I wasn't serious with it. And seriously, it's really is affecting me a whole lot because um, I came out with a um, the result I came out with wasn't really satisfactory to me to what I am seeing right now, the things I want to do as an anatomist. So, and of course, you know that nobody um, definitely whatever you want to do, they also want to see that your results came out within school. And what um, my corrective measures right now is that 
I'm putting in my best in whatever I am doing now as an anatomist. I don't take it for granted anymore. I ride the way with it. And then one other thing, why this question came up, when this question came up, and one thing that came to my mind was, there's this one mistake we always do in school, and it's usually in the final year. Our project work, some of us usually pay people to do it for us. And then when they do it, we just want to pass and leave the school after anatomy is not what I want to do. I did it because I wasn't really interested. All these things you were saying, I beg, I picked no one and the person did it for me. And by the time I realized that, oh, it could have been an edge for me without my project work. Because if I really paid attention to my project work, there are a lot of things I would have gained from it. And it would have helped you. So I think when I started my, um, when I did my NYSC and where I was serving, okay, let me just share this. Uh, I don't think I, I mentioned it when I, I was talking about my career story. When I went for NYSC in camp, and of course, as a passionate person who wants to do medicine, I refused to join the Red Cross. I wanted to be in the clinic. So when I got to the clinic, they were like, ah, what did you study? I said, I them, say, you don't have a place here. Go to join Red Cross. I was like, no, I don't want, this is where I want to be. So they said everything, they said every day I kept coming to the clinic. So one day opportunity presented itself. Someone came in, I think someone had a dislocation. So they've been trying to manage it for a while. And um, the clinic manager was like, that they are not massaging the leg very well, that uh, they need someone that can handle this leg. I just walked up there and said, so I can do it. I was like, you yeah, an anatomy, you don't know anything. What do you want to do? I said, sorry, sir, just give me today. If this leg doesn't improve, then you can tell me to leave and I'll leave and I'll come back. And I I handled the leg just that day. The next day, the girl was walking fine. It wasn't like she was walking better than, than she was yesterday. So the clinic manager was like, oh, an anatomy did this. And then I have nurses, I have doctors, and they couldn't do it. OK, from today henceforth, you have to be in the clinic. And guess what? I worked in all um, all the spheres of the clinic. There are days I'll be in the pharmacy unit. There are days I'll be in the, um, with, with the help of my paramedic, I would be in the nursing unit. And I worked everywhere. To the extent that everybody started calling me Dr. Wisdom. Even to today, I still have that name. They thought I'm a doctor, actually. So um, the truth is, my advice to everybody studying anatomy, you have an edge. Just pay attention to everything that you are doing in school. I, I always tell, because I was a vice president in my school then, um, as some vice president, so I always tell people, everybody that, immediately I graduated, I started telling them, when I started seeing the future of anatomy, I started telling them, I said, most of the things that they tell us is not true. Anatomy has an edge. Please just pay attention to everything, no matter how small you think it is. I think recently they started a neuroscience um, club in schools. I don't know, but someone reached out to me. I was telling me, I said, join. Whatever they are doing, pay attention to it. Because that was one mistake I made. I was in paramedic in school, but I wasn't, I wasn't serious with it. I had the opportunity to be a registered paramedic, but... I, I missed out in that. I had several opportunities in school as an anatomy, but I felt this is not where I want to be. So let me just get my certificate and leave. So that was a very big mistake I made in school. And even though we are trying to patch up right now, we are trying to meet up with everything, but it shouldn't be so with others in school. If you have opportunity to learn anything, opportunity to handle the microscope, please do it. I learned how to use microscope when I came to the clinic. And it was really embarrassing because then in school, they will give us microscope to do something. I'll be like, ah, it's only a couple of I can see here. I'll, like, I'll just leave. <laughs> never, I never thought that one I would do. As in, I'll be working with microscope. I'm serious. My lecturer, one of my lecturers got tired of me because he picked interest in me for histology. He wanted me to be making slides and... I ran away because I didn't want I don't want to have anything to do with that. But here I am to be working with slides, working with microscope. I had to learn it the hard way. So please let's always pay attention to every little thing that is done in school. Every little thing, no matter what it is. Pay attention to it. Cadaver dissection, pay attention to it. 
um, histology, preparing of slides, pay attention to it, it starts from there. You can't tell me you want to be an embryologist and you don't know how to make slides. Maybe that will be your interview question. You don't know how to make slides. What are you then going to do? So please, let's pay attention to every little thing. In fact, I think that became my motto at the time. Every little, you can pass in the lab. I'll ask, I used to ask stupid questions and they'll be like, uh -uh. and you say you read anatomy and you don't know this. I say, sorry, but you can't stop me. I will always ask questions, whether it sounds stupid or not, because I want to know that thing. You'll be telling me that this is A today. Tomorrow I'll ask you why it's A, because I want to know it. I didn't do that in school. If I had done that in school, there are a lot of knowledge that wouldn't have slipped my finger. So um, this is my advice to every other person. Don't make the same mistake. Pay attention to every little detail, everything, every information that passed. Know it. It is your right to know it. Thank you. Wow, that's interesting. So anatomy, please, from, from today henceforth, your motto should be pay attention. <laughs> to every little thing. <laughs> to every little thing. People are going to say, say this one is a liver tissue. <laughs> All right. So I think uh, doctor will finalize everything on this aspect. So Mr. Obed, please. Some persons are asking questions. Sorry, Mr. Obed, if we can just take it before your turn. Um, somebody asks, so that is what they were referring to uh, Mr. Lumide. That's uh, what we, what would be your advice for someone going for a postgraduate in forensic anatomy? You said you are in forensic. So, okay, uh, yeah. So they are asking what would be your advice for somebody going into that aspect? Um, first and foremost, my advice is you make sure your forensic science in your 400 level is so very good. You keep more focused, ask questions, love forensic. I think radiographic anatomy too will help forensic too very well. You get your forensic knowledge and radiographic very tight. So my advice for this person is to listen and ask questions anytime it is forensic lecture. Anytime it is radiographic lecture. You have to ask questions, understand everything in forensic science. This will make you to have this basic knowledge in forensic anatomy, MSc. And please, if you are applying for your master's in forensic anthropology. Ensure you know the sites you are using to apply. Because they might tell you that, okay, forensic science, study forensic science, this, that, that, and you end up wasting your time. You pay a lot of money and you waste time, you waste money and energy. So please, if you're applying online, make sure the site is legitimate. Hmm. And Ensure you love forensic. No, sorry, what do you mean? What, what do you mean by the site is legitimate? Is it not a university? Okay, if you want to study in a university, go down to the Department of Anatomy in any school and approach the HOD and tell the HOD that you want to study forensic science. Maybe probably they have any forensic science or a sub course in forensic. So I believe the HOD will put you through and will give you any of the sites that is available to study forensic in abroad, online. Okay. So please, the person that asked that question, pay attention to your little forensic in your school and your little radiographic anatomy in your school. I believe you do well in the part of forensic, and don't miss out by following scammers online. All right, uh, Mr. Wisdom, this question is for you. Can an MSc in cell and molecular biology help secure a career in embryology? Okay, um, yeah, um, as, as far as embryology is concerned in Nigeria, the truth is that um, it is not limited to anybody. 
Now, reason is because um, there is no certified, like there's no school that is, that is giving a certificate in embryology as far as Nigeria is concerned. So, um, except for people who travel out to do their master's or specialize in clinical embryology, but as long as you have a basic knowledge of what the lab is, first of all, what it entails to be in a lab, that is one of the basic knowledge then you also know what an embryo looks like, even though you have not seen it before, but at least the basic knowledge in your textbooks, know what it entails. Because I, in my lab here, we have a lot of people, we have microbiology, we have, we have biochemists, a lot of different, except from art, of course, and engineers. Okay. So, but um, every other field that you have a basic knowledge on, um, embryology and lab in general, of course, is, is still a training process. Once you come in, you are being groomed. So it doesn't really, your, what you did in your MSc doesn't really limit you to being an embryologist. First of all, they want to see that passion because embry embryology is a very, let me be sincere with you, is a very tough training. And because it has to do with human garments. So you have to be very, very careful about it. So they want to, first of all, see the passion in you. Now, um, that's the first thing they want to see. And then the knowledge you have about lab, not people that, of course, someone that doesn't know anything about lab can come into the lab now use, eating food. You, you don't expect them to bring you someone like that in the lab. So that's what I mean by basic knowledge about lab. You have to know what the lab entails. And then you now have the basic knowledge of what and what they do in the lab the embryos, the garments, the handle. So doing your MSc in cell and molecular biology can also give you an edge to the lab. So I don't think there's a limitation to em em embryology in Nigeria, as long as you have this basic knowledge. All right, Deborah Shibom, I believe the most answered your question. So over to Uncle Obed, our future neuropsychologist. Please, any mistake you have made so far in anatomy and what have you learned from it? Uncle Obed, can you hear me? We can't hear you. I don't know. Okay. You, hello, can you just unmute yourself? Okay, I think, uh, doctor, you can take over. Maybe when he's back to normalcy, he will continue. Okay, sorry, what was the question again? Yes, the question is... Uh, through your career learning in anatomy, what has been your mistake? And then what have you learned from it? Well, <laughs> my mistakes have always turned out <laughs> for good. <laughs> first of all, I mentioned it, my first mistake was my year one and my year two. I was struggling to go somewhere else, all right? Uh, not valuing what I had at hand. And um, it affected my grades. It really affected my grades, but thank God for masters in University of Lagos that helped me. At least now, and I was focused, and nobody actually looks at my BSc anymore. They don't even ask me about my BSc grade anymore because of the what I had in my masters. And um, of course, now I have a PhD, so which even covers for all of them all. And um, uh, so I think that was my major mistake: uh, not valuing what I had because I really did not know what anatomy could, what I could get with my anatomy. And so I kept trying to get something else. Like they say, the field is always greener on the other side. All right, so I, I, I was always thinking it was greener the other way. Uh, um, one thing that shocked me was when I got my job um, at the University of Lagos, that my colleagues who also studied medicine started reaching out to me. Eh, please, can you help? Can you help me? I need a job. 
I need a, I, I need a, 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 I mean, a cow, can I even come into the academia and all that? I was like, really? These guys, you have medicine and you don't know what you can do with your medicine? So I think the, the, the bottom line is that when you have what you have, value it. Put a value on what you have. People will never value what you have more than yourself. First of all, this life, eh, it's very competitive. You see, Ms. Wisdom is talking to you now. She says in her lab, you have um, in the biology field right now, you have medical lab scientists, you have biologists, you have, you, you have a lot of persons in there. If you see anywhere you go to, even in medicine, there are a lot of specialties. And I tell you the truth, everyone is trying to outdo the other. So when you hear your lecturer telling you that this is your anatomy, what are you going to really do with it? It is not a strange thing. Before, I used to think it's something absurd and where, but I've heard it everywhere. Or you come to the US and they say, bloody Nigerian, what do you know? All right? They are telling you the same thing. And yet you're in Yale and somebody telling you, what do you know? But before you know what, you're moving up. You're getting a Nobel Prize. You're getting the, the uh, people just try to outdo human beings. I think that's how it has been from time immemorial. Human beings just try to outdo themselves. So please value what you have. People say their own. Let them say their own. What are you saying? What do you say about yourself? Who are you? What do you have? What can you do with what you have? That's what matters. If you know that thing very well, they will come looking for you. They will come, just keep talking about, you know, when the COVID pandemic came, then I was in Nigeria and universities had shut down and there was really nothing for any lecturer to do apart from your research. Even the research labs were locked for some time. You know what I did? I started a website, Online Anatomy. So now if you, if you Google, you'll find masteranatomy.info www.masteranatomy.info you'll see lectures i have there i started that thing during the pandemic all right this is all i know how to do a lot of time i was like now that lab laboratories are locked down and everything students are no more ah, but my students are at home it opened me into the world so when people are saying you don't know anything you do the world was receiving me all right so please, what's that you have in your hands? Is it your anatomy? What can you do with it? Begin to let men know what you can do with it. They may not want to receive you, but begin to talk. Begin to talk and make yourself important. Before you know what, people will start gravitating towards you. I was in Nigeria when I got called to come to Yale. All right? I was in Nigeria doing my things. I just sat out there and sent my CVs and gave a motivation why I need to be here. All right? I just told them, this is what I can do, this is what I can do, this is what I can do. And I did not hunt for a small school. I went to an Ivy League university, the second best in the world. I went here and I'm here now. All right? Doing the same thing I said I can do. All right? While here, another university contacted me, come and be an andrology specialist. So these things, just know what you have in your hands, you can use it. So I've said my mistake. My mistake was that I didn't value what I had in my hands. All right? But now, there's nothing you're going to tell me. Talk till tomorrow. Say you don't know this. Say you don't know. Uh, well, that's your own talk. And if you don't what do you know, I'll just begin to talk. <laughs> and I can tell you how that thing can help you. And you answer. You'll buy it. You'll buy it. By the time I'm done, you're going to buy into it. So that's that. Thank you so much. Okay, so quickly before you go, I think there's a question here for you that I should show through more light and forensics anatomy. Is that for me? That should be for the forensic anthropologist, right? No, it's a, it's, it asks particularly for the doctor to answer. I believe you have um, a wide um, array of experience in this regard as well. So. Well, um forensic anatomy i, I think is the future of uh, it's a new line of anatomy um uh, which um, um university of calabar has really taken it as a front burner um university of lagos is about starting a dsc anatomy 
and it's one of the um it's one of the components of the bsc anatomy even though the bsc anatomy is majorly on reproduction majorly on reproduction because that's their forte in university of Lagos. um but i think um forensic science is a beautiful aspect globally and anatomists will be able to do very well but i also advise that any anatomy who is going into forensic science should know a lot about your molecular aspects too uh, molecular biology um it's what's going to really make you stand out in the field because that's another thing that has come to stay it's going to make you stand out in your field of forensic science i uh, if you have a passion for it then go for it anything you have a passion for choose one of them and go for it and get to the top at that one all right you may have passion for several things just choose one get to the top at it uh, become the best there then maybe if you still have time you can go and you know feed your other passions that you have but finish one thing finish it get it to, get to the top that's my philo that's my philosophy in life get to the top at least in one thing then after that you can lateralize let me start using my anatomy you can lateralize <laughs> okay okay i'll go from here um about my but before then i would also want to point out that truly being the future of anatomy for instance being the future it's a very integral part actually i'm attending a school this school i'm currently in is national forensics um sciences university and it's the first of its kind in the world that focuses that was instituted basically for forensic science and it attracts um, students from all over the world, be it um, Israel, be it um, some persons even come from the U.S. to come and study in this place, forensic anatomy specifically. Although I was um, privileged to get um, a course in um, neuro neuropsychology and with the basics of, with also a basis of um, forensics, um, forensics in its generality. Um, going to my mistakes. I think one mistake I made was not publishing my um, research, my project. I was discussing with my brother that there were some opportunities that um, you come across after BSc that if you just have one paper published, you stand a great chance of being accepted. I've seen someone who just did BSc and from there didn't even do MSc, but because of his qualifications, I mean his um, astuteness to research was admitted into a PhD level, I think in one of the courses, I can't remember what, but it was basically dependent on the fact that he had research published and he had a, a good um, um, amount of experience when it comes to research. So I didn't publish that and there were some things I had to apply for that needed a research as a criterion and I was not able to produce that. Also, the general um, aspect of not paying so much attention, I think I was a victim of that because um, not that I was truant, but I really didn't pay attention as much as I should have. Um, I didn't... When I, when I discovered that I needed to work in somewhere related to the field, I made um, deliberate efforts to, I did my intern that I see was in Asuko, Asuko Diagnostic Center. That was very intentional because I knew I wasn't, I didn't want to just go into lecturing. I wanted to be in the clinic. I wanted to be in the field. And that has informed my progress thus far and has really given me a, a sense of direction to a great extent. So I think um, the generality of this was um, finding your interest and paying attention to it and working tirelessly towards it to get an edge. Someone was talking to me and he talked about the power of having your own product. It's just like, having, this is my point of standing out. Like um, my wisdom had mentioned severally that how she stood out from every other person. Everyone can have an edge. And what makes us triumphant in this competitive world of research and education is an edge. What is that edge? Our doctor here said he had a site. 
that 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 is a big blow like when you have a site that talks about people want to see who are people listening to what is this person com- co- uh, contributing to the community what will this person contribute when he comes in so if you come out like someone who has uh, a such a, a a site like our doctor that has um a that posts regularly and teach on anatomy you will definitely stand out to be someone who is who has a great amount of prospect so dealing and tailoring what your um point of distinction is i think can be a very good way of setting you aside if uh, someone i was also talking to someone who applied for a very competitive um position in the US and he was accepted as the top 10 in the West Africa but what dropped him down was because he didn't have a place where he was documenting his pro- progress he had done a lot of projects but he wasn't he searched and discovered that among his competitors were persons who on a regular basis either had a blog that documented their progress so it's the, the era of sitting down and um the era of bibi ninja for a, a a an intentional person who wants to progress has really come to an end it's about applying your creativity to show that this is where i am distinct this is my point of distinction i know person like um my brother just wisdom can go and watch what bibi ninja now but we as students currently who have a goal I think we must truly reduce um the that that um idle times and go back to our books and become creative aside the book a professor yes they know the book but the book would be quite obsolete in, in no time not the knowledge but the book the paper book talk about chat gpt now and what here it has brought to the system people writing research without even having knowledge of what the research is all about anyone who has that knowledge currently will stand out so um the points currently is what is my my point of what do i have to compete in this um global market so that has been my mistakes and what i have learned thank you oh, wow do i miss out in some areas because of my country <laughs> <laughs> well, it is well. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much. I think uh to be really speaking, God really gave me a Bible verse. I know we have both Islam and Christian here. So there is a verse of the scripture that God gave me this morning and it's in reference to anatomy. Is it? I think it made me let me just read I said do not be preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving they have given you anatomy you are not responding to it you are just preoccupied in getting medicine getting other things and God has given you something respond to the one God has what given you as our audience sorry our speakers have been lighting us so far i think that has been very amazing i think the last question ought to be you just giving our participants insight of career areas they can go into what are the information that you have in your custodian or you have in your chef you have in your library you have in your research lab that you want to give to our participant that can really aid them okay doc i believe doc doc can help us and clarify more on this information so setting vital tools for our participants that we help them in the future okay thank you um uh, first of all let me start from you have a bsc you have a bsc in anatomy if you have a bsc in anatomy and that's all you have all right you could mm-hmm. um you could navigate into the industry or you continue in the academy in the academia um if you navigate into the industry you you may need to start all right as um uh, an umbrologist it's an umbrology in, intern all right so um i have a friend who is now a general manager and general manager of bridge clinic and um 
we did anatomy together, all right? Her name is um, um, Rose Obeje. We finished together as we finished from the day one we finished our defense. She started as an embryologist intern, all right, in a fertility clinic in Lagos, all right? While some of us went to, we're still thinking about what to do. She had already known what she wanted to do. So if you have a passion in that aspect, follow that aspect and follow it headlong. Don't waste time. All right, go ahead on, on it. Next thing is that, um, well, you could, um, um, I, I'm sorry that I, I don't see so many things that a, a fresh BSc anatomist can do um, um, but we have um, the um, forensic anthropologist who, has, who is doing forensic science and also doing, uh, is also the CEO of um, a particular company. All right. So um, now he has branched out as an entrepreneur, and which is also good. So that's more of like his own personal skills, which he has, and he's using it uh, in combination with the knowledge of his anatomy. All right. But having said that, I know courses like um, um, architecture in Nigeria that you must have a master's first before you can practice. So if you finish your anatomy, I would always see, try and see if you could, uh, if you're not venturing into embryology internship, then why not um, get a master's in your anatomy? The master's broadens you out, all right? So you could specialize in things like neuroscience, all right? You could specialize in things like forensic science. You could specialize in molecular anatomy, all right? You could specialize in um, embryology and andrology. All right, these are aspects where you could go into, okay, and um, uh, anthropology too is also there. All right, and afterwards, you can now become relevant. The neuroscientist is going to, going to go into a research institution to research as a neuroscientist. He could also work in the hospital to help out um, the, um, neuro, the neurosurgeon, all right, in some of the neuro, um, surgical neuroscience aspects of his neurosurgery. All right, that's so, so he could work in there and grow in it. That's not a small thing. You, you, when you finish your school, the next thing you need to do, you may not jump into managerial positions. Sometimes you still start from the grassroots and grow. It also helps you have a good grasp of whatever you're doing. All right. You're going to definitely grow to the top. Okay. So uh, it all matters about what you, what, what's your passion. All right. Follow it. So these are a um, few. If you have that master's, it helps you out. All right. Then if you really want to stay in the academia, then a PhD is what you need to have afterwards. So I've also seen people who have finished their BSc and straight up went for a PhD. They didn't pass through the masters. It's very popular here in Lagos, in, um, in the US. They don't do a masters. You just finish your BSc, finish your BSc with a good grade. All right. And like um, I, I think my friend Obed said, you need to um, have um, a good grade. Then if you can publish that your BSc work, but even if you can't publish it, write a good motivation. All right, why you need to uh, do this PhD with, let's say, um, uh, uh, any professor in the US who has a, a good laboratory, why you need to do the PhD, right? To the graduate school, all right, and you're gonna know your, your CV is gonna be passed along and scored with other, other persons. So, um, if you also have some research experience, like you've done like a research assistance, all right, you have assisted somebody else, you were a research assistant somewhere, all right, if you were that, it also could help you in this career path in which you want to pursue. So from BSc, I've seen people who have from BSc have done a PhD in the US here and have finished their PhD and are doing well too. So um, that's also another part, all right? It might be very for very few persons, all right? But it is there. It's um, just listing them, all right, to tell you that you have several opportunities and several, uh, several opportunities out there. So don't limit yourself. So decide which one you're passionate about and follow. You can, you can be passionate about several things, but at least follow one. Follow one and follow it to the end. All right? In this life, I think you should always get to the um, zenith of whatever you're doing. Then after which you can lateralize. I feel it's the best way. I feel it's the best way. You feel achieved. You feel, um, you feel fulfilled. All right? So you're going into any other field as a happy man, knowing that you've been fulfilled at least in one. I just want to, you know, get this other part. After all, how long do you have to live on it? So at least get one thing and get it right. Right, that's my good in life. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we, can. we can. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. All right. I think uh, our embryologist is off. So 
uh, Doctor. Oh, sorry, Uncle Ben. I'm beginning to call you Doctor. That is prophetic. <laughs> All right. So please just give your participant an insight of areas in anatomy you think they can go into and what they can do with the anatomy this far. Okay. Permit me to be um, a bit biased because the first one I want to mention is neuroscience. <laughs> neuroscience <laughs> and neuropsychology. They actually, okay, all the places you can actually venture into are listed in our basic courses as an anatomist. First, you know, you did, did a embryology in school, so you can actually venture into embryologist. And then you did um, histopathology, you can venture into um, histo, histo, yes, histopathology and things like um, laboratory sciences. And then we did, um, what did they call it? Then as for neuroanatomy, that's a very wide field because you can go into um, neuropsychology, you can go into neurophysiology, you can go into neuroscience, you can go into neuro... They have a, a lot of fields in neuropsychology. And forensics is also a, a viable part that is actually springing up and gaining um, um, ground very fast. And that is also an aspect you can venture into. There's forensics anatomy, there's forensics anthropology, there's um, forensics archaeology, there's all these uh, are representatives uh, of the law that can help you. Although, yes, this is not very standard in Nigeria now. But what I was discussing with a friend recently was these fields that are not very um, paramount in Nigeria. Imagine you are the first person to go and do it and uh, get the insight that they need to establish something. Wherever you are, you'll be the, the affair, on their first call and back on. And you will be in you will be in wherever you are making your solo your solo impact, which is which can go. And then research is also a very integral part that cuts across all medical field. Every medical field needs research. And and anatomists are best positioned for research in all cut across all bit, nothing bit. I was applying for something recently, research assistant, and um, the, thing, the criteria they needed, I, I discovered that um, it was something that I could fit in, although it wasn't in anatomy, it wasn't in neuropsychology, it was general medical. And the persons that, the person that owned the company were actually um, some, a cluster of medical doctors in, the, in Germany. And I discovered that their requirements were basic things that any anatomy can have. So research is a very integral part that can give you an edge, give you the connections you need, whatever level you begin from, be it an intern, be it an assistant, which is also very integral to whatever applications you are making, be it MSc or PhD. So I think those are the aspects. Also, cosmetology is a very integral part. I, I have um, a cosmate who, who currently owns a spa. A spa is a place where you go for um, specialized massage and specialized body exercises um, targeted to different personalities, your personal types or the situation you are going through. So cosmetology is, but it also is not restricted to be it you want to go into fashion. Sports anatomy is one integral part also. I've had um, persons who go specialized in sport anatomy and currently they are um, sharing a, a, a sport club and being their personal, um, is, it, um, is it, should I call it first aid persons or medical attendees, like they attend to them whenever there's any um, spring or whatever there is. So I, like I said before, um, anatomy is like the jack of all trade in medical field. With anatomy, you can venture into anything medical. It's called a paramedical or a basic medical for a reason. With one certificate or the other, um, our CEO, our CEO Olu has, is currently a certified pharma, um, pharmacist. Although he didn't go to the school, but just with one exam, he didn't even do certification like I talked about. Just one exam sitting, and because he has a BSc in anatomy, he is licensed to practice anywhere in Nigeria as a pharmacist. 
And I think that's an edge that anatomy has that no other cause, not even physiology to an extent has. So thank you. All right. Our embryologist, can you just give us an insight of what you think uh, your people can venture into as anatomists? Okay, um, I'm sure everyone has um, mentioned the whole lot. Um, so that's to tell us that anatomy is very diversified. Uh, to me, I don't think there's a limitation to an anatomist. Like, as I am now, I don't think that there is a limitation at all. As long as medical field is concerned for an anatomist, um, just like I always say, is for you to know what you want first, and then um, not just knowing what you want, have an edge, a cutting edge, a very clear edge of um, that thing that you want. Be the boss of what you want. Now, um, we've all mentioned a lot, so I, I don't think I'll really start mentioning it, but also, as an anatomist, with your BSc, because a lot of us who don't have the opportunity yet to go for um, their MS, um, their master's, and they'll be like asking, okay, does it mean that if I don't have my master's, I cannot really do this, I can't really do that, okay, what do I stand? Okay, the truth is that even um, with your BSc, you can... You can, just like we mentioned, you can go for embryologist's intent and start from there, start um, without training. Then you can also become a medical writer. They can become a medical I think uh, that's one thing that a lot of us are already going into. You can become a medical writer, train others, develop others. As you are doing that, you're also developing yourself. Get a niche in medical that part that I really like so much, someone like me that like embryology, uh, if I'm start writing, if I, if I want to start writing now, I wouldn't really be going out of my niche. I'll be writing everything about embryology. And people are seeing it. We never can tell. One day someone will walk up to you and be like, oh, all the content you have been creating, they are really inspiring. Can you help us do this? Can you be in this? It's another way of um, announcing yourself. The other way of announcing yourself, and you can work as a researcher. If you have the opportunity to go for a master's, please do so. It will also give you a clear, um, it will also um, help you. Like some of us, I didn't really do well in our um, BSc because we felt it's nothing. Yeah, it was another for. Yes, you can go for your master's and get a, define yourself very well in master's. It will help you. Um, there's also an aspect of an um, anatomy that I don't really think is that, like, is known now. Um, the genetic counseling is is a, is a part of anatomy that is really when I when it comes to financial aspects, when it comes to being a hot kick, because being um, coming into an embryologist field, I found out that we do a lot of genetic um, stuff. We want to know what people want to know what the gen, their genetic result is all it, it is before they transfer and the rest. So that genetic counseling, I don't think is is um, something that is brought already in Nigeria. So you can also think of going into that aspect. And again, um, to give you um, another, you mustn't really. Someone was asking me, clinical embryology is not available in Nigeria. So must I have to travel out? Now, a lot of these, these foreign countries have made it so easy for us that you can be in Nigeria and you do your course and get certified. So it's as easy as that. You can go online, look for courses. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. You study the structures, you study the function, even what a, a physiologist studied, you studied every, every of it. What a medical doctor studied, you, you did a little of it. So you know everything that has to do with the body. So whatever angle you want to dive into, my dear, don't limit yourself. You have the knowledge. You have, you have the, in fact, I was telling someone, I said, anatomy is, in fact, is really um, a blessing to a lot of us that did it. Like, I don't know how to name, but because with anatomy, you can be everywhere. You can just be everywhere. You, a physiologist has their defined place to be. 
a medical doctor have their defined place to be? The day a doctor said that to me in the clinic, I was I was just smiling because I came to know of that quite late. He was like, I, 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 I now said to myself, someone I've been admiring to be a medical doctor is somehow admiring to be me. That an anatomy, as an anatomy, you can go into anywhere, but him as a doctor, he's a gynecologist. So his work is just in that aspect of, oh, he's already defined, this is where he is. But as an anatomy, I can wake up even um, as an embryologist today and decide that, oh, his neural anatomy I want to go into now. I'll, I'll get that knowledge. Tomorrow, I want to be a researcher. I can do that too. I am not limited. So one thing is this, I don't want to, uh, anybody that asks me out, I always tell them, find out for yourself. But one major thing is that you are not limited in any way. And not to mention again, I'm a fitness coach. I coach people on that because I know the anatomies of the body. So I can tell you when you when you're doing your exercise, where it is affecting, when you are you are dieting, where is it affecting? When you want to gain weight, where is it? So I'm a health and wellness coach as well because. I've come to understand that anatomy is the basis of everything. So whatever I have to do with medicine, I have the knowledge. All it takes for me is to develop my passion, the area I am passionate about, for me to develop it. So don't limit yourself in anatomy at all. Don't limit yourself. Always say to yourself, I can do whatever I want to do when it comes to the medical field. So that is all. Wow. Thank you, you very I, much, can I, can I add one thing that just occurred to me? Yes, sir. You can go ahead, sir. Oh, okay. Now, nobody has said anything about mortuary services because we don't like to hear it, but that's one blessing that we have. <laughs> no, no, exactly. I, I think that's yeah. it. It's one of the things I wrote here. It's one of the things I wrote here. Mortuary services, I think it pays a lot. People, people I, I, shy I tried really that in my final year. I tried that in my final year. When I got to learn about it, I there was one... um. Nam the Azuki Way University. Okay. Yeah, mortuary. They were really paying. I saw people who are not educated at all. At all. Like, they just learned this thing and they are doing it. And one of our lecturers was like, and you are here playing. With, with some, the problem play. is that anatomists don't value what they have. That is why ah. things like clinical and biology, they have not locked it up till now. If it was a medical lab science course, they would have said, nobody can do it. It's only medical yeah. lab scientists that will yeah. do it. But you see that one is still open for everybody because anatomy has not hijacked it yet. Exactly. Mortuary mm -hmm. services too, is still open for everybody because anatomy has refused to hijack it too. All right. <laughs> no, we have not hijacked anything. Mortuary. We have not owned anything because up till today, they are, there's still identity, identity crisis in anatomy. Mm, yes, yeah, but, yeah. yes, up till today, there's still identity crisis which we need to solve. All right. When we solve these things, we'll now be able to own our own things. Things like mortuary services in Germany. They've taken it to another level now. They call it plastination. Even mm. the US is getting plastinated Whoa. bodies from Germany. <laughs> it is very expensive and it's for the rich. It's only yeah. for the rich. I did a workshop in Lagos before I left or in March last year. Plastination. It is so expensive, but it is for the rich class. All right. It keeps the body, it's like uh, um, um, an advanced form of uh, mummification. It keeps the body forever. It looks just the way the person was. All right. You don't use um um your formalin and all those things. Mm -hmm. It is just plastination. All right, plastics. All right. So you can you can get into these things and get to know them. People who have gone into mortuary and anatomists have become very wealthy. And with that one, you don't need a master's. You don't need a master's. You just need class. All right. Put some class on it, and then you realize you are making good money. I mean, just know where the femoral artery is, and use it, <laughs> and you can know how you can do the things. All right, friends, that's all. You don't need a master. If you're thinking that one, you have that one. Do you want to become wealthy or not? There is still room inside that. You know, I mean, you want to what? You just want to become a doctor that don't have money. There is money there. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you doctor. That's a field that is very, very. Uh, when mm. I went into research for that, I discovered that the people that are there, they don't even. You are talking of BSc or masters. They don't even have BSc. They don't have. These they people are actually, maybe people that even they didn't even go to secondary school. I tell you, 
they, they are just trained to do it and they are doing it. So there's, if, a, there's, there's yeah. a woman in Lagos. There's a woman in Lagos. I, I think she came from the arts, right? And started doing embalming. The Lagos state government employs her to do she she does she's very wealthy. I mean, she's a millionaire in that Lagos. It's embalming she does. She has employed a lot of anatomists now. All right, who even have masters to come and do embalming. She's the one running, she has several environment homes in Lagos, right? One person. She did not start, I don't, I've forgotten her, but it's not, 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 nothing related to science. Nothing related to science. So if you're here and you have that one and you still don't value that one, you're still looking at, I told you, it is normal in life for the fields to always look green on the other side. Whether you That's get fun. married, sometimes you now look at another person's wife and say, ah, I like that one is better than my own wife. You look at this scene and see everything like that. That's how it is in life. It's the deception of life. Don't follow that deception. Value what you have. Follow your own thing. Treasure your own thing. And you make waves with it. Wow. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. I think another area we just highlight here is uh, medical representation or representative of most pharmaceutical industries. Uh, most of our students with BSc can become a medical representative of most pharmaceutical industry. I, I once, uh, after BSc, applied for something and they gave me the job, not just really as ordinary medical representative, but as a manager just because of anatomy. When the, we went in there, they were just busy bombarding and I took in my research work on how it affects human organs and the rest of that, and knowing fully well that ethnomedicine is where we get all these drugs. And it's from that angle, anything that affects the human organs is anatomically related. At the end, they just shifted my normal portfolio of medical representative to becoming a regional manager. <laughs> wow, interesting. interesting. So, and they say, ah, you know, these are only still and this is, ah, we have been looking for somebody of this nature. And I was just saying, oh, thank God for anatomy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, you see, it's always like that. And definitely, I lectured in Tarabasi University during NYSE. And most persons doing medical lab and other professions were saying, we want to change and rewrite a jam to pick anatomy profession. And we never knew that there is much in this anatomy always teaching us like this. So mm -hmm. I believe ever since then, I wanted going back to medicine. But because of those student statements, anytime I'm teaching them anatomy, in fact, I just told myself, am I even blind? <laughs> am I not seeing? <laughs> <laughs> and that was one of the major reasons I just, after NYC, I canceled anything that I was writing that focuses on me going back to medicine. So I believe... It has been really helpful being in anatomy. And thank you, Saobed. Thank you, Dr. Edidion. Thank you, Embryologist Wisdom, for coming here. And thank you, Uncle Obed, our participant out there. I know a lot of you have been looking forward to Dr. Edidion is on LinkedIn, you know. If you are not satisfied, you can just search for his name and follow him up. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Uncle Obed, too, is also on LinkedIn. Uh, Embryologies Wisdom, she's also on LinkedIn, Uncle Obed, sorry, Ulumide, all of them. In fact, I pursued Dr. Edith Young because of his profile and also Embryologies Wisdom, right from when I was searching people that I need to see their profile and follow up on LinkedIn and the rest of that. And today, here am I seeing them physically through visual means. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, ma. You're Thank welcome. you, Uncle Obed. People have really done greater works beyond my expectation. I think uh, we don't have questions from our participant again, and we would like to like answer. So on this note, I will say a very big thank you. And also thank you for our wonderful admins in Anatomy Triad. On Gobert is also our admin. He has been the bedrock of all the necessary design and everything. <laughs> the virtual whatsoever. He has mm. been very much Uncle Ulumide too. And then there is somebody behind the scene. We used to call him the prayer room master. <laughs> uh, Mr. Tangod. Thank you very much, members of uh, Anatomy Triad. Okay, we have announcements. And definitely we have been able to highlight 
up to like 20 different areas you can go into in anatomy. So uh, before the end of this month, which is like ending of this month, anatomy trial will still come up online, just the admin to give career insights, specifically highlighting each of the areas up to the 20 areas. And university can find how to get in admission and how to write your personal statement and other things. So that is that. And then I believe in due time, other good, good things like scholarship and the rest will still be coming up from uh, anatomy triad. And Dr. Sir, maybe very soon you will see collaborators with your big, big friends for partnership so that our students can see a placement for their student industrial work experience scheme, sir. And That's maybe fine. in your lab, in your lab there in Lagos, since you have a lab, our students can also do their seaways in your laboratory, sir. That's fine. Yes. That's Instead fine. of them gl glamouring to begin to go and look for doctors, voila, we have somebody who can be here for us. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you for coming around. You're and then if you have any other thing to say, I think it's open for you before we can close the cutting for today. Uncle Obed, anything? I want to say I'm really appreciative of this opportunity. I think it's a, it's a beautiful one, meeting um, persons as distinct as this. I'm, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. I thank very much Sir Michael for opening up this, um, for bringing this. I, I remember when we were discussing about this initiative, that was 219 before I left school. And I had thought he had forgotten about it. I moved on to other initiatives and built other initiatives. But he, when he brought this, I said, this is something to pay attention to. And I really thank God for how far it has come. Um, my wisdom, I'm really appreciative. Meeting you, you are like an inspiration to me right now because this was where I wanted to be <laughs> an embryologist. And then... Dr. Sir, I am really appreciative to meet you as well. And I'm looking forward to more collaborations. We are looking forward to more collaborations with you people, both personal and um, general, as concerning anatomy trial. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Uh, I'm already sending my CV to doctor. I think I'm <laughs> trolling his path. <laughs> I'm trolling his path. I've it's been admiring him for a very long time. So it, today I've no seen you problem. physically. <laughs> <laughs> it's, All it's right. No I, 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 yeah. Yeah, I want to also um, say a big thank you to you, and Matthew, and um, the leadership of Anatomy Triad for what you guys have done. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, if we had things like this in my time as an undergraduate, I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't have made that mistake I made. So I am so excited. I pray you send these things to even the private universities because um, uh, in 2019, I was in Bowen University and uh, I was a HOD then and uh, I talked to the same problems. The same problems are there in the anatomy department. All right, anatomy students face the same problems everywhere. Funny enough, in the US, there's nothing like BSC anatomy. All right, they have um, um, medical sciences, they have all that. They don't have BSC anatomy. You can find them. Um, um, it's at postgraduate level, but in the undergraduate level, you don't find that. And in South Africa, too, you don't find that. Um, so anatomy in Nigeria, uh, so that's why anatomy in Nigeria, they don't really know what they are doing. But they have a lot. They have a lot. So what, when we come out here, people ask us, what was your decision? We tell them, oh, BRC anatomy, really? Oh, that's interesting. What can you do? That's a, thing. That's a catch. What can you do? You now begin to see what you can do. That's, a, that's your opportunity to begin to see what you can do. All right? So I, I, one word I want to leave, just um, be good at what you're doing. People will come looking for you. Remember that the world is a competitive place. So don't think you're disadvantaged. Rather, use that thing you have, that thing you have in your hand. Use it. Just use it and use it well. People will come. It's a matter of time. People will come looking for you. Don't give up at what you're doing. Remember that once, in fact, even the current president of Nigeria, I'm not sure he has a BSc. All right? Remember that. I remember that the former president, President Goodluck, studied zoology in school. All right? So always remember these things. This is the same thing my uncle told me when I was in school. He said, look, I studied botany. I, I studied botany. Now I'm a professor of botany. All right? 
But my friends who left Botany in our second year to go read, read medicine and surgery, they can't stand me financially. That was it. He said, maybe very few, maybe one or two. But uh, amongst his classmates, he cannot really see that, say, that can stand him financially. Why? Because he was a professor of Botany, but he was a consultant to Mobile. Exxon Mobile. He was a consultant to Shell. All right? Consulting botany he studied botany bsc msc phd all right so what is it he said you have anatomy you studied anatomy which is even in the medical sciences today i have i have lateralized my my andrology specialist uh, my, my the andrology in me i've moved it into hiv i'm even moving into cancer research moving those things using my andrology i'm sitting on the bedrock of anatomy but I'm creating things. How can I help these guys who are going for cancer therapy? How can I help these guys who are suffering from HIV? And the world is coming to seek my opinion on these matters. All right? This is how you leverage on what you have. You sit on what you have and begin to sell. You begin to dive. You go in here and begin to help them. You go in here and begin to help them. Just get to become the best. Even if you're not the best, just know it very well, what you have. All right? They'll come looking for you. People always look for people that know what they have and value it. Thank you. Thank you. And anybody that has, um, you want to collaborate, I'm open. You can check me on, on LinkedIn, all right? You would always find um, um, me, Edith Yonkan, on LinkedIn. I don't think there are two Edith Yonkans. It's El Martin, please, you find an Edith Yonkan. I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> all right. You would find me on LinkedIn. Uh, on, on, on Twitter, you find me as Professor Mel's on twitter all right the other my other twitter account just got blocked i don't know why i think i tried to change it to u.s position and they blocked twitter blocked my account and that one is dr eddie account. that's my main twitter handle but it was blocked lately i don't know why twitter did that um so but i have a sec a backup um channel which is called professor mills and um you could um also um catch catch up with me there and then uh, we could just collaborate anyhow thank you all right, thank you, sir. All right, our uh, embryologist, anything for us? Your final word? <laughs> Your like this was made his final word. Your <laughs> final word. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll first say thank you to every um, everyone that made it possible for this webinar to be um, to hold today. Well, I know there are a lot of resources that have been put to, in place for it. So I just want to say thank you to everyone, all the admin, and everybody that thought to it. Wow. And this is really, really enlightening. I came here and I learned a lot of things. So I don't know how much more about people, other people participating, but I learned a lot. And I want to leave us with this. There are several ways to gain career insights in the field of anatomy. And this is one of it. So what are you living here with? Then, aside what you've learned from this place today, also grow your network. You have met a lot of great minds, people that are also um, people that are also participating in the comment section. You can just reach out to everyone. There is nobody. No man is an island. That's just the truth. No man is an island. So network with other people, other professionals. Um, conduct information interviews, ask questions, and then attend conferences and workshop. It's, it's really, um, this is one of the workshop and this was really enlightening. I've learned a lot about forensic anatomy. I've learned a lot, of, a lot, and I'll still keep learning a lot because ah, I'm very good at networking. I've sent my connect already to doctor. So doctor, go <laughs> <meet you after. laughs> Everybody that if you know you are still your student, let's go and link in and start because I'll send my my connect invite already because I can ask questions a lot. So no man is an island. So please yeah. network with everybody. Mm -hmm. Attend conference. You don't know what the conference is all about, but just attend. As long as they say it's an anatomy conference. And then join the sorry sir, please was um is anatomy tried, right? That's triad. It. Yes, anatomy triad. Please join. I, in fact, I've started writing to my school and I was telling um, one of our lecturers the last time I said, there is, there is a, um, 
there's this platform, there's this growing network that I would love the school to introduce, even if it's as a club. Like, I, I was just telling it to her. I, because I want others to know. Because when I met with Matthew, I, when he was talking and sharing information about the, um, the, the platform, I was really, I was like, ah, I wish I had something like this in my year one. Eh? I would have, in fact, maybe I would have graduated with a first class in anatomy. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, yeah. Honestly, but I didn't, we didn't have that. All we had was negative words, negative words. And thank mm. God we, are, we came out to that negative word and today we are making impact yeah. in our generation. So um, everyone reach out to all the anatomy you know, whether alumni, whether people that have graduated, done their master's, PhD, they should join. We want to make impact. I want to tell people that anatomy is a great course. It's the basics of medicine. So anybody that is thinking that it is nothing, it is something. And with this, um, the last time I was speaking with Matthew, he was saying something about having um, an international body that is ruling anatomy. Yes, maybe from here we can grow and get that. Get um, something like a license for anybody that is in anatomy, that is a graduate of anatomy, because that seems like an edge that physiology have over us. No, 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 like, no. We, have, we have the American Association for Anatomy. No, uh, Nigeria, I don't that, think we have anyone. No, Nigeria has the um, um, the uh, Society of Nigeria. Is, Anatomical Society of Nigeria. Is that what you mean? Is that what you're yes. talking about? We, we, have, we have something like that, in, but we, I don't think we have a platform apart that from is, the WhatsApp platform I know of. All right. And even then, you know, um, there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, the big, well, of course, with the professors and all that, the, the BSc graduate might not be able to really have a voice there, all right? But um, I would always see these other big bodies, like the anatomy, um, American Association for Anatomy, EEE. Mm -hmm. You can log in, you can, subscribe, especially on Twitter, all right? Yes. You can log in, you can follow them, you know, and begin to make, that's where you begin to make your noise. Don't be asking people to come and help you. They will run away from you. They'll think you have too many problems. Already, they have their own problems. That's true. Start announcing yourself. Those your um, uh, fitness things you're doing, put it, tag them. Those things you're doing, they have a lecture, it's what they see you do, tag them and all that. People will begin to see you. By the time, six months into it, you now send your CV. And I would like to do something like this there. They're like, oh, we've been following, we've been seeing you. And then they can pick you up. That's how. They, so begin to follow this big. We have another one in Europe. I'm not too sure of the name, but I'm very because I belong to the American Association for Anatomy. So you can follow this one. It's a big society already on its own. It's big and it's global. When they say American Association for Anatomy, it's not just for America. It's a global uh, association. It's for Canada, it's for America, it's global. So you can do it and also begin to make waves there. Make waves. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I think uh, at this junction, we would like to say a very big thank you to our participants. Remember that uh, pay attention to every little thing you really learn. Little detail. <laughs> <laughs> I remember for those of you looking forward to do MSc, every school in Nigeria have their strength in anatomy. I think I miss out in that area. I wish I have learned today that every school in Nigeria have their strength in anatomy. So look out for their strength, and if their strength is equivalent to your strength. And for those of you that have already done well, try to lateralize. <laughs> I'm mm. using doctor's term, mm. <laughs> lateralize. Mm. <laughs> and then always look forward to uniting with other bodies. Anatomy trial doesn't end here today. Remember, we are here forever. Till Jesus come. Hmm? We are here forever. We'll be updating you on our different platform, different programs will be coming. Very soon we'll be going for a courtesy visit to our senior brothers, whom are anatomists, whom are physically in Nigeria, going also to schools, harnessing with departments and HODs, and seeing how to push our anatomy to a better ground. So thank you very much for coming around. And as you go, remember, anatomy triad is always for you, and you are also for us. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you. Bye bye, sir. Thank you. Bye bye, bye bye, bye, -bye, bye, -bye, bye, -bye Uncle. Bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Ma yeah. Thank you.